Welcome to today's EMN5. We're going to talk about hypocalcemia, which I know is not a thrilling topic, but I'll try to keep this short and simple for you. So let's start off with the case. We have a 67-year-old male, history of chronic kidney disease, seizure disorder, who is non-compliant on Dilantin, uh, presents by EMS. He's yelling, not cooperative, complaining of a lot of different things, including total body pain, thigh cramping, and he also had a seizure earlier today. So during the course of the ER visit, he continues to yell at staff, he's complaining of pain, so we get some basic labs, get an EKG, and then he has a seizure. So while we're giving him some Ativan, we take a look at our EKG, and we have these findings. So what's abnormal here? Let me give you a little clue. Here's two more with the same finding. Good, we have QT prolongation. So now we're starting to think of what is our differential for QT prolongation. And as we're starting to think about that, we have our lab values that come back. We have a low calcium. The serum corrected calcium is 1.4 with a normal of 2.2 to 2.6 in millimoles per liter. And that all makes sense. So we have hypocalcemia causing QT prolongation and probably seizures in our patient. So a little bit about calcium, 99% is in the bone, which means 1% is in the extracellular fluid, and 50% of that is actually ionized, meaning it's bound up by albumin and citrate. So what are the causes of hypocalcemia? You can split this into a couple categories. You have the parathyroid causes, hypoparathyroidism, parathyroid hormone resistance. You have the vitamin D deficiencies. And then we have calcium chelation, which is probably what we need to think about most in the acute ER setting. So this is anything from hyperphosphatemia that's chelating out that calcium, so rhabdo, tumor lysis, a massive hemolysis, also patients with pancreatitis, we see that all the time. Think about it if they just got a massive transfusion, so there's a lot of citrate in the blood products, and also an ethylene glycol toxicity, which can cause hyperoxalemia, and in sepsis, so that's kind of in the other category, specifically gram-negative sepsis. So those are kind of the things, the calcium chelation specifically, and sepsis, that you should try to think about in hypocalcemia in the ER. So the symptoms you're going to see for hypocalcemia have neuromuscular excitability, uh, carpopedal spasm, tetany, Voschek sign, Trousseau sign, seizures, confusion, altered mental status, and on the EKGs you're going to get the prolonged QT, bradycardia, you can get complete heart block, and even heart failure. And highlighted in red is what our patient was having, uh, was having tetany, ended up having seizures, and a long QT on the EKG. So let's go through a couple of these. So what is Voschek sign? So this is where you have the patient relax their face, and you're going to be tapping on the side of the face. You can see it in the picture there, and that's going to elicit a twitching response or possibly even a spasm of the entire face. Trousseau sign is when you inflate the blood pressure cuff, and you're going to go above the systolic blood pressure, hold it for three minutes, and you're going to end up getting the carpal pedal spasm, and that's a good example of the carpal pedal spasm there. And here's another example. So you're going to have MP joint flexion, you're going to have DIP and PIP extension, and sometimes you're going to have wrist flexion as well. So what's our treatment for severe hypocalcemia? That means patients that are having any symptoms at all, including tetany, spasms, arrhythmias, seizures. So you need to IV replete it. We can do this either peripherally through calcium gluconate. You can do 1 to 2 grams over 10 minutes, and you're going to keep repeating it every hour until the symptoms resolve. And you expect that that's going to raise the ionized calcium values about 0.5 to 1.5 and should last about one to two hours. If you have a central line, if this is a really sick patient, you can consider giving calcium chloride. That's going to be one gram over 10 minutes. And once they're inpatient, this is something to think about a little later, you're going to start oral calcium daily as well as vitamin D repletion. If this is a patient where there's a lot of chelation due to hyperphosphatemia or hyperoxalemia, think about doing dialysis. As far as labs go, make sure you're checking not just a serum calcium, but an ionized calcium, mag, phos, K. Make sure you get an albumin level, and then think about checking your different parathyroid and vitamin D labs. So three to remember for hypocalcemia, the symptoms are going to be muscle spasms, carpal pedal spasm, seizure. Make sure you get an EKG. You're going to look for a long QT or bradycardia, even block. And your treatment's going to be IV repletion with calcium if they're symptomatic, and also think about dialysis in a patient with hyperphosphatemia. Here's the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.